Welcome back everyone to part 7 of 10 Red Dead Redemption 2 Secrets. A series in which every video is filled with 10 secrets from different games. Since this is Red Dead Redemption 2, naturally there's a lot more ground to cover and plenty more secrets to find, so whereas in most instances I have to really trawl to find secrets, when it comes to this game, I have to limit myself as far as timing is concerned as to not turn this playlist into a battery farm for Red Dead Redemption 2 content. That being said, with the addition of this one there are 20 videos in this playlist at present and 7 of them are on Red Dead 2. But my inability or unwillingness to escape this game aside, please enjoy 10 Red Dead Redemption 2 Secrets Many Players Missed Part 7. Before we begin, of course, I'd like to issue a spoiler warning, but apparently issuing spoiler warnings for games that aren't the most recent is stupid according to some people. However, if you don't, it risks other people getting upset and you can't win, so just live with it. But now everything's in order, please enjoy the video. For this video's first secret, we need to head to this spot on the map just north of Moonstone Pond. Whilst riding through this area, you may notice a very particularly shaped rock overhead, for it appears to depict very distinctly a face, most likely due to the fact that somebody has carved a face into the rock, Mount Rushmore style. It appears to be a woman's face, and it was presumably carved by the bloke who is now hanging from the scaffolding erected surrounding it. Looting his remains will give us a note from the sculptor, and it reads as follows. Whoever finds this, I am sorry. I was worthless in life, and now am even more so in my death. I gave my life to my art, to creating a monument to the one that I loved, but in doing so, I lost her. Great art moves very slowly, but the heart moves very quick. Now I look on her face, and I see that terrible French cat, that scribbler, that second-rate smearer of colours, that crude little goat. I have been a fool. I will die next to my monument to foolishness." So it appears as if this man was carving his lover's face into the rock, however, there was a breakdown in their relationship, and if the mention of a terrible French scribbler and smearer of colours is anything to go by, it appears as if his lover left him for Charles Chatenay, who can be found in Saint-Denis. The trauma of this commitment being for nothing has resulted in this fellow killing himself, which is certainly a sad story. For secret number two, we need to take a trip northeast to this particular spot along the rails. Whilst riding along the rails, you may come across a part of it that is overshadowed by cliffs to one side and covered by a roof on one specific part. I'd imagine it as a name, it's not a shed and it's certainly not a bridge, but hey. In the rock face, you may notice something that seems a little unusual to say the least. Upon closer inspection, you will see a skeleton, fossilised human remains from a long time ago. In the real world, the presence of a fossilised human skeleton in exposed rock in the Americas would be unlikely considering humans haven't been present in those continents quite as long as that, though I also suppose it wouldn't necessarily be impossible. But hey, it's just chilling here by the train tracks and nobody's thought to remove it and study it. I suppose it's a cool little detail and functions as a point of interest. For the next secret, we're headed to a location just a short distance west of Van Horn Trading Post. From the ground, it doesn't appear as if there's really anything here. However, thanks to this observation tower, if you will, you may notice that the mound is shaped like a serpent, a snake. This is the Serpent Mound, which is likely a reference to the real-life Great Serpent Mound in Ohio. This real-world effigy mound that the game version is based on is believed to have been the site of ceremonies dedicated to some form of spirit. Perhaps this carries over into the Red Dead version. And the presence of a viewing platform could be a reference to the studies that were carried out on the Serpent Mount in the late 19th century. Secret number four brings us out into the Heartlands, where a short ride west of Emerald Ranch, just south of the Heartland oil fields, we can find the Register Rock. 
Register Rock is basically a rock with loads of names carved into it. On each side there are different names, some recognisable such as Jay Brooks and others that are not. It's believed many characters in Red Dead Redemption 2 are referenced on this rock, for example JM is John Marston, a Mary L which could be Mary Linton, Billy Midnight, Otis Miller, Scott Gray and Frank Heck. There's also an A West and B Ward on here, possibly hinting to Adam West and Burt Ward, who portrayed Batman and Robin respectively in the 1966 version of Batman. The in-game Register Rock is a reference to the real-world Register Rock located in Idaho, where many Oregon Trail immigrants carved their names onto the rock. And yeah, that's kind of it. For secret number 5, if we head to this spot in Blue Water Marsh located north of La Gras, along the river there's a chance you may bump into a boat. If you don't get eaten by alligators first, I mean, they're everywhere. From this boat, you may be able to hear music playing within. Investigating the vessel reveals you can head inside the cabin on the lower deck, where you will find a lonely phonograph. The owner of the boat is nowhere to be found, all that remains is the music playing from this delightful piece of technology. It's great to listen to, especially as you're pondering over how its owner probably died. I mean, of course he's dead, everything in this swamp wants you dead. Our sixth secret of the day brings us out to Owengila, west of Strawberry, where at this location you might spot some fancy carvings in the trees. As it turns out, there are faces in these trees. There are five trees in total with faces carved into them. Whose they are is unclear, what they mean is also a mystery. However, they form what appears to be an almost perfect circular clearing when viewing from above. In Arthur's journal, he will state that he wonders what these tree markings were trying to tell him, if anything. Some players have speculated the faces represent characters from the Red Dead series, whereas others believe it represents the evolution of man, and there's even a theory that this face carving is meant to be that of Bigfoot, as seen in Undead Nightmare. But I suppose when it comes to games leaving things like this open to interpretation, the truth is what do you make of it? Secret number 7 brings us to the scene of the Battle of Scarlet Meadows at Bulger Glade, located to the east of Braithwaite Manor, south of Rhodes. The Battle of Scarlet Meadows was fought here during the American Civil War, decades before this game is set. However, on a stormy night, the sounds of the battle can be heard, revealing the truth of what actually occurred here. These sounds will play faintly and sporadically as you explore the area on a stormy night, but you get the idea and if you want to go and find the rest of the 
sounds that can be heard, then go ahead and do so. You know what to do now. But the story goes, Quincy Harris, the Confederate general, hailed as a hero by some in Lemoyne, was actually quite the coward. But this is hinted at in many different ways, such as his equestrian statue in Saint-Denis being defaced with the word coward. And now we're officially into the part of the video that delves into spoiler territory, albeit loosely, I won't lie. For secret number eight, we need to head down into Hennigan's stead, to the road that circles around McFarlane's ranch to the north. Riding along, you may find yourself coming across a creepy scene. An ornate hearse with an empty coffin. The horses have been slashed to death and the driver hanging dead on the back of the carriage. Certain aspects of the scene appear to be caused by an animal, whereas the man was certainly either killed by a man or driven to kill himself for whatever reason. Many players have theorised this could just be the remains of a run-of-the-mill crime of some description, whereas others have suggested it may have something to do with the infamous vampire of Saint-Denis. Naturally, the truth remains to be seen. Moving on as we venture deeper into New Austin, our ninth secret brings us to this spot located east of Armadillo. Amongst the cacti, we can find a solitary camper dead next to his tent. His attire is that of a man who has come from far distances, and on his body we can find a letter written in a manner that confirms as such. However, if you press read, you can read it in English. Dear Zhao Yi, I appreciate your efforts to search for your cousin Zhao Ming in America. As your uncle, I am eternally in your gratitude. My son has always been a romantic, frivolous boy, and this journey to America is just another of his romantic dreams. As if a son born to the greatness of our family could ever find satisfaction building such an uncivilized nation as America, or in marrying such a woman as Zi Ruo. She is little more than a sorceress who has imprisoned his heart and encouraged him to betray his family. His desire to prove himself independent of his family responsibilities here in Shanghai and in Hong Kong is neither admirable nor honourable, and I am forever grateful that you, as a member of his generation, do not share such foolish ideas. Good luck in America, your uncle, Zhao Wei. So this bloke we have here died searching for his cousin Zhao Ming, whose romantic ideas have led him to America. This Zhao Ming is likely Zhao, a romantic Chinese slaughterhouse worker we meet in Red Dead Redemption during the Stranger mission Love is the Opiate, which is set years after this game. So, I think it's safe to assume this retrieval mission was unsuccessful. For our 10th and final secret, we're headed to the far southwest of New Austin, where we can find a corpse. I think it's most accurately a skeleton in clothes at this point. However, it's clear that this bloke has been here for quite some time. If the complete decay of the body to skeletal state wasn't giveaway enough, he also appears to be donning some rather funky clothes. The remains can be looted and on him we can find a letter that reads as follows. Letter to Brother Rodolfo from Cardinal Blanco, Madrid, November 24, 1797. My dear Brother Rodolfo, thank you for your letter. Sometimes politics and the ways of the church are not as pure as perhaps you wish they were. The world is the world of men, yes you say, God has given it to us, but we must live in the world as it is, amongst men, some of who are both very powerful and not entirely receptive to our message. Such is the king at this time, or at least so are his envoys. Perhaps my weakness is a terrible sin, and the concessions I granted them will lead me to hell, as you suggest, but equally, it is possible that your pride is also perhaps a little sinful. I do not know. I have learnt that we are at our most vulnerable when we judge others harshest. I beg you to reconsider your plan to leave the mission. We need your energy here amongst men. Perhaps as you say, God calls you from the East, as once he called the Magi. But firstly, I would like to remind you the Magi travelled west and your journey from the mission is an extremely perilous one. 
Like you, I believe in acts of blind faith, but unlike you, I do not believe God wants us to be stupid. Please stay in California until I arrive next March. I implore you to show wisdom, loyalty and humility at this profoundly difficult time for all of our brotherhood in the new world and to refrain from making the perilous and vainglorious journey alone. Our very survival depends upon it. Sincerely, Cardinal Blanco. Well, it would appear as if he made the perilous journey alone as we found his body over a hundred years later in New Austin. This fella is a Jesuit missionary, and he travelled so far alone that when his environment got the better of him and he died, nobody knew where to find him, and nobody who could find him cared to bury him. Sin a bit, brother Rodolfo. And that's only bloody gone and brought us to the end of another video. So, let's give ourselves a pat on the back. Thank you all for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be awesome. If you like history, then you can check out my history channel Decades that I'm running with a couple of friends via a link in the description beneath the timestamps. But if history isn't your thing, please don't worry about it, there'll be plenty of content coming out here as well. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, please take care and goodbye.